direct contact with professional artists and their work can provide a powerful stimulus for children's creativity and learning. It's certainly done so at Meridel Primary School in Wolverhampton. Here, Year 4 pupils are finishing off a stone carving outreach project with Craig White, an art interpreter and sculptor from the City's Art Gallery. We wanted to broaden the children's horizons when it came to artworks. We didn't know what they actually thought about art or the topic that we were going to investigate or explore. So we really wanted to stimulate their minds. The whole um, way that the project got started was that our head, Simon Lane, um, and Merrydale itself, all the staff, were keen to get to know what was going on in the local communities. And we found that um, the art gallery was actually part of an outreach project. The work at the school was inspired by an earlier visit to the gallery. In preparation for the visit, well, we talked about um, portraits and those sculptures, um, and we looked at sculptures around the school. I mean, we've got a um, beautiful willow sculpture outside, and we've got lots of woodland. We had a look at their shapes, um, and we went outside to sketch those as well. We tended to, before we went, ask them to write down what they expected to get out of their tour and their visit, um, what questions they might like to ask the artist. Merrydale School has worked with us before. We've done a project, creativity in the curriculum project with them during the last academic year. And we've offered them another project this term. Uh, we've got 2D and 3D projects that we do with, with uh, school groups. The Sense and Sculpture exhibition was set up about two and a half years ago. All of the pieces are interactive and all of the pieces can be touched and there are braille panels for people with sight impairments. It's also accessible by people who just want to come in and see something and be able to touch something. This is uh, Sensing Sculpture and this is an exhibition of um, pieces of artwork and sculpture that specially been, been designed so that you can touch and feel things. Remember before I said that you can't touch things in galleries, we're not allowed to touch the pictures. Well this exhibition has been specially set up so that you can touch things. You can walk around and feel the different textures and the different forms and different parts of the, of the sculpture and today what we're going to sort of have a look at and what we're going to go around is sort of feeling all the different things in here and feeling the different textures and feeling different, different things to help you when we go back to school. Yeah, the main advantage of this exhibition is, is, is sort of so different to anything they've ever sort of really done before, especially sort of being allowed to touch artwork. A lot of the, you know, virtually every other gallery sort of keeps you away from it and there's barriers and things. When the children come into the gallery, it's such an exciting experience for them. The look on their faces when they actually see real pieces of uh, artwork, real pictures, real sculptures, um, they can understand how the artist has made these sculptures and pictures because of the marks that the artist has left. And they really begin to get a connection with the artwork, which is so different to the reproductions that they have in school. Um, we start off with a sensory cabinet that's got lots of, sort of various different objects in there. And they sort of basically get their fingers warmed up and touch and feel and guess which, what objects are what in, in a cabinet without actually seeing them and then they walk around and we get them feeling different different surface textures like bronze and stone and, and wood and things like that. With the bronze one there's lots of sort of quite easy spots if you know what I mean and then there's these sort of simple streaks and then you see on this on this carving here the wood carving we've got sort of lots of gouge marks and then with this hair here on this one you see this granite word the marble one sorry we have lots of fine lines carved into the into it. So if you all walk around and have a touch and a feel of each one and tell me what the differences are, what's, if, if you had your eyes shut when you were touching it, what would be the difference between them? So see if you can describe them to me. Many museums and art galleries now do have please touch exhibitions, but almost all of them will have handling collections. I think the experience of, of being able to literally touch the past or touch something that, that a creative artist has made really gives them a, a feeling and understanding of the process that they just don't have when they're reading about it or listening to people telling them about it. We have students from all different key stages coming in and working with us in the gallery. So guided tours can be adapted so that they're working with key stage one children and talking to them at their level. We also get students from key stage three and four coming in quite regularly to see what's on in the gallery. 
and the teachers plan this into their schemes of work so each year it will be a regular feature that they come along to the gallery. So this, is, this, this room's been set up because we've got lots of bags with different smells and there's lots of sounds that are triggered off by some little sort of laser beam things down here. So we'll have lots of different sort of things and that's, that's to sort of wake up your other senses. But it, it's a bit, no, it's not bad food, no. There's some spices and herbs and things. Each one's got sort of slightly different. So if you have a, a rummage round of them, some of them might smell worse than others. When the children come in and see the Sensing Sculpture exhibition, not only does it cover the art curriculum, it can also be used to enhance the science curriculum. When you're looking at different materials and how these materials can be scrunched and twisted and changed, the exhibits that we have here are really uh, inspirational for the children to be able to see how different natural materials and man-made materials can be adapted. To finish off the session, the class makes rubbings of the different textures and materials on display in the gallery. Pupils take these back to school to use as inspiration for their own sculptures. We've been doing, looking at sculptures and doing different textures and drawings. What was your favourite part of the gallery? Um, like getting the piece of paper and drawing and things. Why do you like this in the gallery? It's fun and I like art. Something very um, stimulating for the children to have another speaker and the hands-on experience for them um, is really beneficial, especially when we get back to classroom and they can go back and look at those different techniques that we were shown around the actual classroom and the buildings. A week later, Craig visits the class and gets them thinking about the shapes they're going to sculpt. So, to get you started, we're going to do um, have a look at dreams. OK, so you might have some ideas about dreams and stuff. And what I've brought in here is um, something which is Australian art. Have you heard of Aborigines? Their artwork, part of their, sort of some of their artwork and part of their cultures and the sort of stories and their history is called, um, so it relates back to something called dream time. And a lot of these pictures are to do with dream times and, and sort of ancient sort of ideas that are taken from their dreams and things like that. In this first workshop session, Craig uses his practical experience to help the pupils develop achievable ideas. We've got a, a spider and um, all its legs out. Now, if you made that out of stone, what do you think would happen to the legs? Too thin, they'd snap off, wouldn't they? So what we, what we could do is, instead of carving all the stone away and leaving just the legs to sort of become weak and snap off, we could just sort of leave it on the stone. Working with Craig today, um, he brought in some pictures to show the children and he talked about dreams and what we might, the children might see in their dreams and the children were asked, asked to actually sketch those. Don't worry too much about them being sort of perfect or anything like that because sometimes when you make mistakes they sometimes they might lead on to better ideas so you never quite know what, what's going to happen. That's it, how are we doing? That's it. So draw me some, draw me some pictures of things. The way that we've actually fitted in the workshops is that they take place every afternoon um, for about six weeks. Um, with the timetable, we didn't really make a drastic change because we already have um, a session of art. It just means uh, maybe moving one subject um, a bit earlier on in the week. It hasn't really interfered with our timetable at all. All these ones are um, teddy sport. Got a fiery teddy sport. And this one's a chef. This one's 50 cents with a dollar sign. The project seems to have really helped build the children's confidence, particularly the EAL students. We found that um, having a, a few children with English as a second language. The art allowed them to express themselves better. It was nothing that was either right or wrong. It was their own beliefs and their own interests that they were showing. Which of your designs are you going to use? The flower. Why have you chosen the flower? Because I, I like flowers so much. So we've got a set of you all got some quite nice pictures and you've got some nice ideas come out. So what you need to think about now is what your final design is going to be. Who thinks they're sort of got their finished designs. OK, um, I'll come round and see each one of you very quickly. We've got a cat, haven't we? Yeah. So where do cats live? Same. I think they have a mat. Yeah. So maybe if we draw the mat in there as well, you can draw the cat line down so then we haven't got the legs sticking out, maybe. How about that? 
it's fairly important they get all the design right and it all sort of fits into not not easily breakable and things like that and so making sure they've got a good idea of what their design's going to look like and a good idea of what they're they're really doing. You've all done really well. Um, they're all pretty much finished. There's just little bits. I'm going to have to go around and just sort of make sure that you've all got a good idea of what we're doing as we're starting. But next week we should be uh, ready to get started and you can all get your hands on. Six weeks into the project, pupils have reached the finishing stages of their sculptures, with the practical element being particularly appreciated. Over the past few weeks with Craig, um, they've actually done their sketching, um, they've drawn it onto their A3 paper, cut it out, put it onto the blocks, and then they've started to chisel away at it um, using a hammer and chisel. By doing a practical hands-on follow-up exercise, the children really were gaining an understanding of the um, creative process that they would not otherwise have had. So they were, they were actually trying out every stage of it for themselves and understanding um, in a real way, I think, just how difficult and complex a process this is and how much time and patience it requires. I think we also saw them having enormous fun. And the art gallery visit was really beneficial to the children for them to see the actual sculptures in front of them, talk about them and touch them. And it provided a good basis for them to start their actual blocks. You get it, you get it. That's it. Get your hand around it, nice tight grip on it. Both hands on nice tight grip. That hand as well, get that one nice. That's it. My sculpture is at um, man's face. Wayne's sculpture was coming along really well. He stuck with a simple design, but it's come out really effective. He's come out with his features of the face really well. Um, today he was actually just filing it all off, and it's a really nice, smooth, freestanding shape now. I've been working on the side to make it flat and smooth so that I can make the hair to make it a bit more look, stand out. I've been making a chef, like, with his hat and his pointy hat. The chisel and the hammer are for cutting off the edges and the file is for smoothing the sides. I have to say that some children have progressed really, really well with it, more so than they would say in um, their curricular subjects like numeracy, literacy or science. They've really found it a lot easier to go ahead with the practical work because they're seeing what they're doing and they've used their own initiative to carry on with it a lot of the time without much prompting as well. You want your head to have a nice sort of sweep to it, don't you? So we'll, do, we'll just take that off to get a start. So any big lumps, take them off with a chisel. Okay. The workshops and the art gallery are of great benefit to the children nowadays. When I was at school, we didn't really know where the art gallery was and didn't actually know that it was a fun place to be or a learning environment or that these workshops happened. Um, having the opportunity to visit them now with the children and having um, a qualified artist come in and do work with them um, just really broadens their horizons and stimulates their minds. We will most likely evaluate the learning that, and what they have picked up from the actual visit itself and from Craig coming in to work with them. And we really do hope that at the end of the day that children have enjoyed the artwork that we've done and just seen that it's not just about drawing, that it's about doing some practical activities. I think the best bit is seeing um, where they started, which was just that block, and where it is now, and the fact that the children can feed back and tell you how they've actually created their finished piece. It's just nice to see that finished product at the end.